Well, good evening, church family. Welcome back to Wisdom Wednesday. We are once again in Psalm 107, beginning at verse 23. So if you have your Bibles handy, which as always, I trust that you do, go ahead and make your way there. We're going to take a look at uh, another one of the different types of the redeemed. Uh, the psalm begins by telling us to give thanks to the Lord for uh, his love endures forever, his steadfast love endures forever. And of course, we'll read that again in just a moment here. Uh, and then it's followed up by uh, different types of redeemed. It even follows up and says, you know, let the redeemed say so. Um, and, and so it shows different types of redeemed. Uh, after that, and we've been going through those, and, and some of those may have resonated with your life, some may not, um, and, and if not, that's fine too, because that means that God has met people in ways that perhaps he didn't meet you, and that's that's okay. God meets us exactly as we need to be met. He, he finds us where we are, and that's a beautiful thing. Tonight, we're going to look at another one of these types, and uh, this type, you know, may ring true in your life. It may not. We give glory to God all the same. But before we jump into our text here tonight, would you join me as we go to the Lord in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we continue to give you thanks for your word. We thank you for uh, this reminder of this psalm, that you are good, that you do love us, that your uh, your steadfast love does in, endure forever. And, and the love, uh, Lord, as we as go through these different types uh, of redeemed, uh, we thank you for the work that you do in the lives of people. We thank you that you meet us where we are. We, we may not be able to identify with some of these types, and that's okay. It reminds us that you love each and every one of us so much that you, uh, you, you find us in whatever manner of lostness we have found ourselves to be, whether that be rebellion or stubbornness or pride or, uh, or, or boldness even, as we will see here tonight. Uh, Lord, you, you find uh, whatever it is that we need in our life. You meet us and you find us when we cry out to you. Uh, and we thank you for your faithfulness in all of these things. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would just uh, lead us here tonight. Help us to find something new here in your text. Help us to know you better, serve you better, and love you better through it all. May your Holy Spirit be our interpreter and our guide as we explore this text. And we ask all of these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, as I mentioned a minute ago, I'm going to read the first couple of verses here just to sort of set the tone. Now, I've been doing this before we go over the different types uh, as we've gone through Psalm 107, the first couple of verses really sort of highlight why we're going through these types. So I'll read that, and then I'll put this up on the screen so you can read along with me once we get to Psalm 23. Psalm 107 begins by saying, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, who he has redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and and from the south. Again, we have this reminder that God has redeemed people from every corner of the earth, right? From uh, all different places, uh, all different types. And uh, these are the types that we're reading about. So we pick up in verse 23, and it says this Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the great waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous works in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven. They went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their evil plight. They reeled and staggered like drunken men and were at their wits' end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad that the waters were quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love. For his wondrous works to the children of man. Let them extol, extol him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. So we, uh, we've we seen different, again, different types, and, and many of the types that we've seen um, have come from sort of this place of rebellion. Uh, we saw, you know, some that were dealing with the consequences of their sins. Some were being stubborn and, and were rejecting uh, the wisdom and the word of the Lord. Here we see something a little different. Uh, one thing that's important for us to kind of put in the framework of our understanding of this text is, you know, it was not very common, especially at the day and age of this, this writing, um, but, you know, sailing and, and especially sailing in open waters, right? You know, there were, there were fishing boats and that sort of thing, but getting out into... Uh, open waters and actually going to on great voyages and, and things of that nature uh, was not something that was ever done, right? You know, or at least not done very commonly. 
uh, we, they didn't see the sea as something that was enjoyable or, or you know, they wouldn't go on like a pleasure cruise or anything of that nature. Uh, the, the sea largely represented the unknown. And many times when you see the ocean or the depths uh, being mentioned throughout scriptures, there's usually a sort of negative uh, connotation to that or, or at least a foreboding sort of connotation um, because there was, there was that great mystery of what lied under the waters and, and what happened beyond the horizon. So when we're talking about this, you have to understand that, you know, this wasn't normal. So when it talks about those that went uh, down to the sea in ships doing business on the great waters, it would have taken really some significant business uh, to pursue a venture like that. So what we're really talking about here is someone who is stepping out in boldness really kind of going further than anyone else really has. Um, again, you know, voyages and things like that did happen, but it was extremely rare. And for someone to make a large voyage uh, and to return safely, uh, they were they were very highly regarded when that happened. That was that was a sign of of someone who definitely knew their craft, um, but it, again, was not done very commonly at all. So what we have here is, again, someone that is sort of moving forward, uh, very brave, very, very proud even, very bold. And, you know, we do that sometimes in life. We step out and we, we kind of get a little too sure of ourselves sometimes. And we get a little too bold and a little too brave. And we, we step into things that maybe we shouldn't. And we need to kind of have uh, our, our, our cage rattled a little bit sometimes. We need to, we need to be uh, reminded of of just how fragile we really can be so let's take a look at this text and kind of walk through this and you'll see what i mean some went down to the sea in ships doing business on the great waters they saw the deeds of the lord his wondrous works in the deep now one thing i love about this here at verse 24 um we, we see this even today in you know other realms of exploration and now you know by and large we're, we're talking about space at this point when um you know, that's really kind of the area that we're, we're exploring now, right? The final frontier. Um, but it seems to be that, you know, n there's no world in which you can go to, right? No, no area of the world that you can go to in which you don't find God all the more. Um, as we, as we sort of look, and you can even find like even in the small things, right? You look uh, through a microscope and you, you find wonders that are there, that were there the whole time. Right? And it just reveals God's glory. And then you look through you know, the telescope and you, and you look at the far reaches of the galaxy and you realize that it's God the whole way. And he's, he's glorified all the more and even, even the big things. And so here it's highlighting again in that, in that context, again, you have to remember the time in which it was written. Um, you know, with, he's talking about the fact that over the horizon even, you know, this area that you don't know about, this uncharted water, they go across this and they see the glory of God all the more. God is revealed in these areas that they think they are perhaps the first to find or that few have seldom uh, gone to. You know, no matter how brave and bold you think you may be and, and how, uh, you know, pioneering you think you may be, God has already been there. And God has already established those things. His glory is made evident in those lesser seen uh, areas of the world just as much as, as in the, the, you know, the more often seen areas of the world. And so um, we're reminded, you know, again, they saw the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous works in the deep. God does great things. There's no place that you can go in which you can't find the miraculous works of God. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. This right here was pretty much the big reason why they didn't take these journeys. They didn't have uh, the resources and the technology and things to handle the the, the turbulence of the sea and, and the uh, the stormy nature of the sea and the, the heavy waves. But this is a reminder that these things that were beyond our control, these things that caused us great fear, God had full command of this. Right, that was that was the glory that was being revealed here. As you see this violent and angry sea, and God is in control of it. God can cause it to rise. He can cause it to be still, and we'll see that here in just a moment. He is in full control over uh, this this you know this force. Right, that you know well, it's not really a force, but you know what I mean. The, the over the nature, over the uh, the waves that 
that we have no control over. You know, we, in, in this ship, out in the middle of the ocean, we're completely at mercy to the wind and the, and the waves. Um, but God is in control of those things. He commands each and every one of them. He commands the wind. He commands the waves. Uh, and so that, again, revealed his glory all the more. They mounted up to the heaven. They went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their evil plight. Now, I want to stop here. Uh, let me just talk about the first part. Uh, this is really just sort of talking about the, the, the nature of the ship being moved. When it talks about they mounted up to the heaven, talking about the rising of the wave. You know, the, the wave would have appeared to have lifted the ship up toward heaven. And just as quickly as it raised it up, it comes right back down. Uh, they went down to the depths. Uh, the courage melted away in their evil plight. So there's this whole rise and fall that they are completely out of control of. And we, we even see as it uh, touches on verse 27 here, they reeled and staggered like drunken men who were, and were at their wit's end. So there's this, this uncontrolled movement both up and down and sort of left and right. And, and they, they were losing control all over the place. The one thing I did want to sort of uh, highlight here, depending on the, the translation that you're reading here, in verse 26, they mounted up to uh, heaven, they went down to the depths. Their courage, excuse me, <coughs> their courage melted away in their evil plight. Got to get some water there. Um, their courage melted away in their evil plight. Now, your translation may read differently. Let me show you what I mean here. So here's um, Psalm 107, verse 26, and a couple of different ones. Um, so went down to the depths and their, their pair, uh, their peril, their courage melted away. Um, the sailors crimson terror, uh, ESV, this is one we have here. Uh, King James melted because of trouble. Um, new American standard, uh, melted away their misery. Um, you know, it reads very differently, uh, in, in multiple translations. So when you see something like that, I always like to go to the source text and let's let's see where they're getting this from. How how are they drawing so many different conclusions? Because some of those have very different connotations, right? This one, uh, the ESV translation, seems to, you know, kind of paint this evil, sinister sort of thing, right? In their evil plight. Uh, whereas other ones talk about the the evil or the danger being the circumstances. So let's let's see exactly what the text is talking about. We have. Uh, again, I showed you a couple of different translations here, uh, but again, we want to go to the source text. So we're going to take a look at the Hebrew here. Yeah, my computer is being silly here. There we go. All right. So here we can see line by line what we're, we're talking about. And this is the particular section here uh, that we want to look at. And this is... This is the specific Hebrew used, and this is the strong concordance number uh, that aligns with the root of that word. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And what you always want to do is we want to look, and the, and the, the root of what we're looking for is this ra uh, here, um, which is, is used commonly to refer to, as you can see here, either bad or evil. Um, and we find it being used, as you can sort of see here, where it's used elsewhere in Scripture. It's always helpful um, to let scripture interpret scripture, right? So when you find a word and you're unsure exactly how it's being used or how, uh, what an expression might mean, rather than simply trying to, uh, to discern from the words alone, what that would mean, or even context clues, right? Immediate context clues can help, but sometimes even that's not conclusive. Uh, what we want to do is we want to look at how is that word used across the board? How is it used as a whole? And by and large, it's usually pretty consistent across, you know, the, the, uh, the majority of uses. It's rare that you'll have a word that means one thing, you know, 15 times over here, and then it means something different over here. That's pretty rare. Can't say it never happens, uh, but it's pretty rare. And, and in those cases, context really kind of indicates what is happening here. But here you see a pretty strong mix uh, of evil, as we scroll down here, um, there's some wickedness, and of course we won't go through all of them, um, but it does talk about, so here we have harm and hurt, um, you know, from uh, good or bad, things that are bad, from harm, 
so so there's a pretty open uh, understanding of where this could be going. Um, so depending on where your translation means in this one, um, you know, I, I think given the context of what this passage is talking about, when we come back here, when it's saying uh, they mounted up to heaven, they went down to the depths, their courage melted away, um, you know, again, either in their evil plight or um, because of their distress, uh, as with the other ones would, would sort of imply. Um, we're not really given anything in this particular passage that would indicate the sinful nature or the um, rebellious sin of this individual type like we're given in the other ones. Not to say that these people couldn't be free of, you know, or that these people are free of sin. I'm sure they, they absolutely are because um, we all are, right? But the other passages, the other types, we see very specific mentions of causes of sin. We talk, it talks about how, um, you know, they, they spurred, uh, the, or spurred the, the wisdom of the Lord. In fact, let me go ahead and, uh, look at those again here, just so we can read against this. Uh, they rebelled against the words of God and spurned the counsel of the most high. Uh, some were fools through their sinful ways because their iniquities suffered affliction. They loathed any kind of food, right? We, we see specific causes, uh, for why they may be suffering here. You, you just simply have someone that is being perhaps a little too bold and and boldness and brazenness can you know when it manifests as pride uh certainly can be sinful and we want to recognize that but when we look at this um you know I, I i don't know if an evil plight is necessarily what, what they're getting at here uh we're not given any indication as to what kind of business you know they're pursuing uh, based off of 23. so i don't think really that's one that we want to get wrapped up in so if your text uh, read something other than evil plight and simply says, you know, their courage melted away because of their distress or because of their trouble. I think that that is reasonable. There's a lot of this passage that's talking about how uh, the uncertainty of this circumstance, the the waves, you know, rising up and, and crashing down and, and then being uh, staggered to and fro like drunken men, um, that that speaks true to the turbulence of life. You know, when we look at this, there's a lot of things in life where when we, when we, when we push things a little too far, when we, when we step out into the unknown a little bit, um, we're going to find ourselves being rattled just a little bit. We're going to find ourselves in situations that are going to challenge us, that are going to frighten us and scare us. Uh, and that doesn't necessarily mean that we have sinned in doing so. That just simply means that we are in a place that we have never been uh, and that there is an unknown, and there are scary things in this life. When we lose control, like these sailors who are in the ocean, uh, when they are at the mercy of the waves, we, we're there sometimes in life. We are at the mercy of the waves, being tossed to and fro, and do not know what to do. And this is exactly when God hears us. And this is what we see. We're reminded uh, here again in verse 29. Um, I'm sorry, I, I skipped over 28. I don't want to skip 28. That's an important one. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. Now, if you've been with us for Psalm 107 over the last couple of weeks, you've heard this line before. In fact, we see this in each one of the types. If you have your Bibles uh, with you, I want, I want you to take a look at something here. Verse 28, then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. Go back to verse 19 of the last type. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. Uh, verse 13 of the next type, then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. And then verse six, they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. This is sort of a refrain that we hear over and over and over again in each of these types that they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he heard them and delivered them from their distress. This is, this is the truth that we find in each one of them, that when we cry out to the Lord, He hears us, uh, and He delivers us from whatever this trouble may be, whether it's some trouble that we caused and got ourselves into, whether it's some trouble uh, that, that the world has sort of brought upon us. He hears us when we cry out to Him. This is a universal truth among each one of these types. Your circumstances may be different, but God hears you when you cry out to Him, and He will deliver you from your distress. Verse 29, he made the storm be still and the waves of the sea were hushed. We're reminded uh, 
you know, back to verse 25 when it's talking about God who commands the winds and the waves. He makes them be still, right? It's talking about this turbulence of all the things that the, the ship cannot control. They're not in control of the weather. We're not in control of the, the things of our life. But just as God can calm the wind and the wave here in this circumstance, he can do the same thing in your life with, with whatever it is that's causing trouble for you and causing you grief. Whatever is the, the, the turbulent sea in your life, he can calm that storm. This is the truth that we walk away from here. Then they were glad that the waters were quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. Here's, here's another reason why I'm, I'm a little less inclined to actually go along with this translation. I'm on the evil plight. Um, he brought them to their desired haven. You know, when, when we pursue a sinful destination in our life, it's rare, and I, I want to venture to say it's pretty much impossible um, that God delivers us safely to the end of it. I, I don't see any circumstance in which that makes sense, uh, in which that would be the, the case, that God would deliver us to whatever sinful ends we were, we were trying to achieve. Um, if they were trying to arrive somewhere that they should not have been going, I just don't think that this is, you know, that he would have taken them to their desired haven. I think he would have taken them to a safe haven, right? He would have taken them somewhere else where he wanted them to be had gotten them there safely. Uh, but because he takes them to their desired haven, right? I, I just, I think that they are, they're just going out in, into the unknown and they're facing, uh, again, the, the, the turbulence of the sea um, and having to, to lean on God in that uncertainty. Um, but again, a reminder that God can still the storms in our life and he can deliver us safely to wherever it is uh, that, that we are headed, right? And then we trust that where he is leading us, Right, wherever we feel that he has called us to go, sometimes God is going to call you to go through some storms. This whole idea that God calls you to go somewhere and it's going to be completely easy the whole way, that's not true. Um, God can call you to go somewhere and you have some turbulence in the middle of that. But it's so that we turn to him, it's so that we cry out to him as we see, uh, and he will deliver us from our distress and he will deliver us safely to wherever it is that he has us to go. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love for the wondrous works of the children of man. Now, I mentioned earlier that um, this verse 28, then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress, that it's sort of this repeating refrain uh, throughout the course of this psalm. This is another one. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love for his wondrous works to the children of man. And we see that here, verse 31 uh, verse 21, we have it again in the last type. Verse 15, we have it in the last type before that. Verse 8 in the type before that. So there's this repeated theme, again, that God will hear you when you cry out to him, that he will lift you out of uh, your distress, that he will deliver you from your distress. And then we see a repeated imperative here to praise him, right? To thank him. Thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works, to the children of man. God does wonderful things to us, and we should thank him for that. Uh, again, no matter which direction you came from, no matter what kind of redeemed you are, thank him for what he has done in your life. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. Don't keep your praise silent. Don't keep your praise inside. We glorify God when we share what he has done in our lives. I pray that God is continuing to do great things in your life, and uh, we should take every opportunity we can to share that with others, that they might be encouraged through his praise. Would you join me as we pray? Heavenly Father, we give you praise for your wondrous works. Lord, you do amazing things. As, as we uh, look at this, this psalm and the reminder that you are doing fantastic things beyond the horizon that we can see, beyond what we can possibly imagine, uh, Lord, we thank you for the wondrous works that you have done that we have both seen and can't see. Uh, Lord, all of it uh, is is worthy uh, of praise, and so we thank you for that. We thank you for being a God that we can't even fully comprehend. We want to praise you for being in even the most desolate places, uh, Lord, the, the, the most dangerous areas of our life, the most uh, turbulent and unknown and uncontrolled areas of our life. Lord, you are already there, and you are you are ready to hear us, you are ready to receive us. There is no place that is beyond your grasp, and we thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for hearing us when we cry out to you. 
uh, each and every time as we have seen in each of these types you hear us and uh, lord you you deliver us from our distress in every single situation lord i pray that as we re uh, reflect on these things that you give us the courage to praise you in the assembly to praise you uh, before others lord to glorify you uh, that others might know of your good works that they might know of your wondrous works and they might know uh, lord that you're there to redeem them as well they may not be going down the same road they may not be the same type of redeemed as we are but lord i pray that our testimony would give them uh, hope that we would encourage them but we have to open our mouths. We have to speak your praises in order to do that. And so I pray that you would give us boldness to do so. Lord, help us to honor you in all these things. We ask these things, praying in the way that you have taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those that have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, church family, as always, it's been a privilege to walk through uh, these different types with you. It's a privilege to open the word of the Lord with you. And we will have one more uh, week with Psalm 107. But I want to encourage you in all things, thank God for the blessings that he has given you. Thank uh, God for the way that he has redeemed us. In, in so many different ways, he has met us exactly where we are. We give him thanks for that. Praise him in the assembly. Praise him. Glorify him. Tell somebody this week of the good thing that God has done for you. I look forward to uh, opening the word again with you next week. But until then, may the Lord bless you and keep you.